Hello guys, in this After Effects tutorials, I'm going to show you how you can create a 3D logo animation retaining its original color like this. Nice. So stick around, let's get started. We're going to start by creating a new composition. Then feel free to use your own settings because the setting I use in this case does not matter. Sana all. Yes. Yeah, it, it kind of matter, but it doesn't really matter. It depends on what you want to achieve. So, but make sure you name your composition. Then you hit OK. Locate where you have your logo, then click and drag it into the project manager window. So make sure you set this to footage instead of composition. Then you hit OK. This is going to import the logo in one file. Then drag and drop it into the project timeline. Then we're going to hold Ctrl Shift D to pre-compose this. Or you can right click, go to pre-compose. So we're going to name this logo holder. Then make sure you move all attributes to the new composition. Then you hit OK. I'm going to control D on the keyboard to duplicate this. Then I'm going to name the bottom one. Hit enter key to rename it to texture. Then we're going to go to the top one. Go to layer. Then auto trace. You can pause the screen to see the setting I have used for this. Make sure this setting is similar if you want to achieve similar result with my 3D logo animation. So you can pause the screen now and take these settings. Yes, I think that is enough. God, please, no! No! Yes, uh, it is enough. No! Yes, yes, it's okay. So then you hit OK. That is going to automatically trace all these elements that you have in your logo. Then we're going to hide all of this temporarily then right click on your timeline go to new and create a new solid layer then we're going to name this 3d however you can name it whatever you like you can name it your girlfriend's name if she's important to you in this case make comp size and then hit ok what Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> oh no. To pull up this 3D logo animation effect, we're gonna be needing a plugin called Element from Video Copilot. So let's go download it. Head on to Google, type in Element from Video Copilot. Here it is, download, install. Damn! Now that we have element installed, select your solid layer, then search for element. Then we're going to add it to the solid layer and the solid layer is going to automatically disappear. Yes, of course, that is only on our preview window, but we still have it on the timeline. So now we're going to go into some of these settings. We'll go into the custom layer settings, then we're going to expand the custom text and mask. Then on this part layer one, we're going to select our logo holder composition. Then we're going to collapse this custom text and then expand the custom texture maps. Then we're going to enter this layer one and also select the previous composition that we rename texture. Then we're going to go back up right here and click on the scene setup. That is going to bring up the element 3D interface. Interface. Yes. Interface. Okay. User UI. Whatever. Right on the top of the screen right here, select the extrude. That is going to extrude your logo. If you select the preview window, you can see your logo is already in 3D. You can click and drag and rotate it to get a better view. So we're going to stay here. Then expand this extension model. So we're going to select the bevel one. Then we're going to come here to the extrude and make it four. Yes, this is where it gets interesting. If you take a look at the 3D right here, it's just simply white. There is no texture and it doesn't have the true color of the logo. To do that, we're going to scroll down right here and check use UV. 
you see here, right here, check use UV. Then you scroll down, 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 down. Right here, you go to the diffuse. Then you see it is not set. Then you click on it. This is going to pop up right here. Select the arrow. Then you select the custom texture layer, which is the logo holder composition. Then you hit OK. You can see right now it has all the color of the logo, but there is one big problem. Yes, it's a problem. Stop it. Get some help. Okay, okay, I agree. It's a challenge, but we need to fix all this dark side of the extrusion. If you have ever used 3D software to create something similar to this, you will understand that with 3D applications, you will need to set up the light, adjust the light, the material to be able to get rid of the artifacts at the side of the 3D logo. But with Element, we're going to be using only one, just one adjustment. So scroll all the way back up with just a single setting in Element, you can take and get rid of these artifacts right here by the side. So we call that Expand Edges, of course, we're going to move it to the negative values. So you're going to keep moving it until you have it all cleared up. So this will all depend on the type of logo and also what your environment setup is. But here, negative 0 0.87 works for me. Oh my God! Wow! So you can experiment with yours. Just cleared it up like this. Beautiful. So now we're going to go into the preset folder right here and then go to environment. Then we're going to select the basic 2K15. We have 15 images right here. So we can select any of these just to add reflections to the logo. So now I'm going to select this uh, one right here. You're not really gonna, not going to see anything right here in a moment. Wait for it. But we're going to leave it at this or this or this. In fact, just choose whichever works better for you. <laughs> yeah, boy. Now, if you rotate this, you see we have our 3D with in true color. So to have this inside right after effect, we need to click the OK button right here to exit the element window. And that is going to place our logo 3D in our preview window. Yes, preview window. Window, window, window. Yes, window. Our 3D logo is ready in its true color. So now we're going to give it some movement. To do this, we're going to add a camera to move. Yes, move, move. So there's no particular way of doing this. Let's head on to After Effects and add the camera. So now to do that, let's right click on your timeline, go to new, and then add a new camera. I'm going to go with the 35 mm. Of course, if it is not yours, you can select this right here. 15 mm also is good, but I'm going to go with the 35 mm. If you are a photographer or maybe a videographer, you will know why I am doing that. Now you hit OK. So this is going to add us a camera. So, but one quick tip, if you want to have an easy way to animate this quickly, if you hit the C button on your keyboard, that is going to activate the orbit tool. So you can select and then rotate it around. If you want, you see this is fast. And if you hit the C again, that is going to activate the move tool. So you can move it left, right, up and down, left, right, up and down, left, right, up and down. Then if you hit the C again, you're going to be able to pull in your camera or pull out. Yes, out, out. If you want to drop the camera tool, just hit V on your keyboard and that is going to drop the entire tool. So, but we have things messed up right now. Everything is just messed up. This is not what we want to see. Expand the camera. Once you expand the camera, hit the reset button and that is going to reset everything. I am the one, the one you're trying to... Yes, you can see it's actually easy. Very, very easy. Yes, as easy as sleeping. 
We are not going to animate the camera just yet. There's one more thing we need to do before we get to animating the camera. Yes, yes, we need to do this. It's, it's actually it's, it's important. Yes, if you want to show your family and friends that you are a pro in After Effects, you need to do this to this logo. Nice. We're just going to hit the C to activate the Orbit tool again. We're going to be able to see it slightly from the side. If you see, everything right here is so flat, no shadows. Yes, shadows are very important, you know. To do that, we're going to go to the 3D layer right here so that we can see this collapse all the options. Then you go to the render settings. Then we're going to go to the ambient inclusion, 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 occlusion ambient or occlusion okay whatever so we're going to go into this then we're going to enable the ao once you have that enabled automatically you can see there are shadows dropping already on the logo so we're going to go to this intensity and make that three <laughs> So now let's get into animating the camera. So like I said, there's no particular way of doing this. So we're going to reset this again. However, we can hit the C button now to activate the orbit tool. So we're going to position it the way we want the final camera to be like. Maybe something uh, like this. I'm going to leave it to this. So I, I want to be able to pull in. So I'll hit the C again and then pull in. Okay, this is the move tool. So I'm going to undo, then hit C again, then pull in a bit, just slightly a bit. Now I hit the V tool to drop that. So I'm going to expand the transform camera options right here. So I'm going to set a keyframe. So I'm, I need to move this time indicator to maybe two seconds forward in time. Yes, somewhere here. So then I will set a keyframe for the point of interest right here and uh, camera orientation. So I'm going to move back right here. So I'm going to simply hit the C again to activate the orbit tool. I slightly want to move it. Uh, okay, okay. Maybe I should move it, pull in a bit. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, somewhere right here. Then I'll hit C again to activate the orbit tool. So I'm going to pull it somewhat like this. Just slightly a bit. That is okay. Hit V. If you scroll through the timeline, you will see that this is actually animating. Yes, it's, it's, it's not really animating the way we want it or no. <laughs> so what happened right here is because we did not add a keyframe for the position. So we're going to add that now. Then we're going to go back right here. Then hit C again to activate the tool, the pull in tool. We need the zoom tool right here. So we're going to pull back to whatever we had before. Then we're going to activate the orbit tool. We had something like this. Okay, so let's see if this works. Beautiful. You see that works. So you need to add a keyframe for the point of interest, position, and camera orientation to be able to get some of these things going. So now what we're going to do is to come here, right here. We're going to hold this camera, Control Shift D on your keyboard to split that. So we're going to open the up camera by hitting UU so that we can see all the options remove all the keyframes right here this is okay so what i'm going to do now is to set new keyframes for this so hence i only use the position and point of interest i'm going to leave it at that so i'm going to hit the c again to do this to the logo okay so i'm just gonna leave it like this right here so what i'm gonna do is to move back to about five seconds forward in time then i'm gonna move it like this just feel free to set what works for you i'll just move it slightly then i will hit c again to activate the pull back to then 
I can just uh, leave it like this. So I'm going to select this last keyframe right here and then set the keyframe assistant to easy ease or you can hit F9. Yes, F9. So if you preview the entire thing now, this is what you're going to have. Beautiful. You can do it! So this is how you can create a realistic 3D logo animation while retaining its original color right inside Adobe After Effects using the Element 3D plugins. If you learned something new on this video, please hit the like button. That will enable the algorithm to suggest this to more people. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me in the comment section and I'll reply to all questions as quick as I can. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So in whatever way you are able to support me, I highly appreciate you. So until I see you again on the next one, my name is SSB Otaru from Motion Digit Studios.